Hi again. Welcome back to my uh, writing loft, also known as my attic, where I hide up here from my family and do my writing for my second video blog. I had such a nice, lovely response from the very first video blog that I decided to continue doing them until people just tell me to shut up. So here we are again. I've decided to draw this little series of blogs, The Truth About Publishing. And I don't mean that in like some weird government conspiracy way where I'm, you know, sneaking into New York publishing houses and finding out all the weird things that they're doing. No, I just mean that this is going to be the truth about publishing as I know it, as I say it. And if I get something wrong, please let me know because it's been occasionally known to happen that I'm wrong. I think it happened once. But anyway, today we're going to talk about rejection letters. And and we all hate rejection. It stinks. There's no other word for it. We don't like it. If we liked it, we'd, you know, do it all the time. I don't know. But rejection is awful. And as writers, we are all subject to rejection letters at one point or another. I have never met a writer who didn't get a rejection letter. So we'll talk about the different kinds of rejection letters. First, two things that you need to know about rejection. 99 point, some really high number of re stuff that comes into an agency or a publisher is rejected. Almost everything. I'm not going to tell you the reasons why. I'm going to ask you to go up there to your little search engine and put in the word slush killer. Slush killer, all one word. You're going to find an article by Teresa Nielsen Hayden, who was associated with Tor Publishing. Hi, Teresa. And she has an iconic post on the reasons why stuff gets rejected, at least from her point of view. And I think it's pretty true across the board in publishing why stuff is rejected. Okay, so almost everything is rejected. It stinks. And the last thing that you really need to understand about rejection is that it's not personal. It's not you. It's the work. There's a bunch of different reasons why. Don't sit there and try to uh, make a fool out of yourself and figure out why or cry about it. I mean, we're all going to cry about it. We're going to cry about it. We're going to be upset because we had some hope for our work and we've lost the opportunity at that moment. But just know that it's not you. It's not personal. Just try to learn that. And I, it's taken me a while to learn it, but I'm passing that now, that wisdom on to you right now. It is not you. It is, per, it is not personal. So rejection letters. The most common kind of rejection letter, the rejection letter that everybody gets is the form rejection letter. And I've gotten a bunch of rejection letters over the years. I've gotten some really strange rejection letters. The worst probably rejection letter I ever got was my own query letter, which was awful. It was for my first book. It was a terrible query letter. Shoved into my return envelope and the word no scrawled across the top. That's it. Just no. Uh, it was awful. It was awful. It was a terrible rejection letter. And I'm laughing now because it's pretty funny. But at the time I was like, really? Really? Just no? That's, that's not nice. I've gotten emails that said, no, thank you. So at least that agent was polite and said, thank you. But just no, thank you. Dear Christine, no thank you, agent name. That's it. All right. So not everybody gets a great rejection letter. Not every rejection letter is wonderful. The first kind of rejection letter, the most popular, for lack of a better word, rejection letter is the form letter. This is a letter that an agency or publisher puts together as a standard rejection letter. Those 99.8% or whatever of, of queries will get this rejection letter. And they do it to save time. Not because they don't want to sit down and tell you something personal every single with every single query, but it's just that they don't have time. Publishing is still run by human beings, and they still only work five days a week, eight or nine or ten hours a day. Some of them probably much more, but still. Sending out rejection letters is a small part of what they need to do. So they have a form letter, and in the old days when they came by the mail, I've gotten them photocopied on a crookedly cut half sheet of paper. That's, that makes you feel good. And now most everything's email, but it'll say something like not right for us, doesn't fit with our list, we're not interested at this time, whatever. It's usually short, sweet, and to the point. And you're going to sit there and go, what does that mean? Why didn't they like it? Why are they saying it didn't fit? Why is it not right for them? They are not going to tell you. Don't try to decode it. Don't try to sit there and, and there's no secret to it. It just means exactly what it says. We didn't like it and we're not going to tell you why. And it's frustrating. 
And I know it's frustrating, but it's just, it's just the way it is. And, and just put it away, put it aside, mark them off your list. Sometimes you'll get a form letter and it may have a little bit of a personalized line to it. It may say, uh, the hook didn't grab me. Uh, I got one once that said, this is too coincidental. Uh, the voice didn't, I didn't like the voice. The characters didn't ring true for me. And, and it's not going to be a whole long list of things that they didn't like, but it may be one specific thing that really said no, really was the reason they said no. I mean, they only needed one and that was it. And that's pretty good actually for a four of four. And then they'll put the rest of the form letter in. And that's actually pretty good. That's a good sign because they thought enough to write that in there and say, okay, because now they're telling you either you can have two choices, either find somebody that does like the voice or does like the characters or adjust. Okay. Think about it. If you get five letters that all say the same thing, maybe you need to do something in your manuscript. All right. You have the form rejection letter, the semi-personalized rejection letter. Sometimes you get a rejection letter. That's a form letter, but it says on the bottom, um, please send us more of your work. We'd like to see more of your work in the future. Take them at the word, put them on a list, put them in a file. And the next time you write something, send it to them because agents and editors are not here to stroke your ego. They're not here to make you feel good. If they say that they'd like to see something else from you, they mean it. They mean it. There's no reason for them to say it otherwise. So do it. Then you get the personalized rejection letter, the often heard of, the rarely ever seen, the mythological personalized rejection letter. And I have gotten a couple of these. And when I tell you that a personalized rejection letter is like Willy Wonka's golden ticket, I, I totally mean it. Because the only thing that you can do past a personalized rejection letter is an acceptance letter. You are one pretty much one step away. You're doing something right. And you should take that little personalized rejection letter and dance around your living room and, and scream. Because it means that they thought enough to take the time to write you a personalized letter and tell you, I, I got the best personalized rejection letter I ever got. The best rejection letter ever came from an agent and it was two page email. It was a two page email. She sat down and wrote everything out and it was, it must've taken her a long time to do it. And, and, and that's time that she gifted to me to do that. And I was, I was so excited because I actually wound up doing a complete rewrite of the, of the manuscript based on some of her notes. And it was a much better manuscript. And I think it was that manuscript that was that rewrite, the rewrite before the rewrite that got me my agent. So it, she put me on the right track. And so it was an agent I highly respect. I probably owe her a box of chocolates or something for that. Uh, so if you get one of these personalized rejection letters, please know that you're on the right track. It's still no, it's still no, unless the agent tells you to revise, ask you to revise and resubmit. Uh, again, like gold, like gold and do it, do it. If you think that their suggestions are justified, if you think that they are good suggestions and that they're going to make your manuscript stronger and you agree with the suggestions to make the changes, resubmit. If you don't agree with the changes, you don't have to. I mean, it's your choice. It's a free country, but you got to think about it. So there you go. You have the personalized rejection, the semi-personalized rejection, the, the form rejection, the semi-personalized rejection, the personalized rejection. There's also another little subcategory of rejection that I call the bad timing rejection. <laughs> I've gotten a couple of these. I had an agent once say to me, I just signed an agent with a book like yours. I can't have competition. I'm really sorry. Or we just signed a book uh, that's really similar, comes in a really similar time frame. It's too much alike. We can't do it. And I said, it's bad timing. It's not you. It's nothing against your writing. It's just, a, it, it happens. It's bad timing. So that happens too. The last little bit of uh, advice I'm going to leave you with today. Never reply to a rejection letter. Don't do it. I know you want to. And especially if you get one of those personalized or semi-personalized rejection letters and you don't agree with it and you want to write a nasty reply and tell them all the ways that you're wonderful and you're going to send them, you're going to show them and, and you're going to, when you're standing up there accepting your whatever award, you're going to uh, be sure to send them a copy of your uh, book when it's published and all, all this stuff. I know, I know you really want to do it. Don't do not Avoid, resist the temptation. I know it's hard, Write it all out on a Word document. Write it all out. Get out every last thing you want to say to this agent or editor. Delete it. Then delete it and let it go. Because when you send those rejection replies, 
the agent notices it and they take note of your name. And the next time you come up or the next time they're out at lunch with their agent or editor friends, they're going to remember it and they're going to talk about you and you're giving your, you're putting yourself in a bad position. It's just not good. It's not good manners. It's under the authors behaving badly category. It's not right. So don't do it no matter how much you want to. Okay. Unless the only reason you would reply to a rejection, reply to a rejection is if you want to write them a nice note to say thank you. And that's okay. They may not read it, but you've said thank you and you're polite and that's all right. Just leave all the rest of it alone. Leave it alone. Okay. So uh, that's my take on rejection letters and I will talk to you next time. Bye.